It's the Cantos. We hope you're enjoying this beautiful weather. And make sure to be safe and stay healthy. So get out there and have some fun. We miss you and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Hi everybody, we miss you. Um, this is our crazy dog. She likes to be quarantined with us. Hopefully we'll see you soon. Love you guys. Hey guys, love you, miss you. Hope to see you all soon. Take care, stay safe. Good morning and welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Freehold. We are so glad that you are worshiping with us this morning. Just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, first, we are still looking for your pictures and your videos. So record a greeting or pass the peace. Uh, if you do pass the peace, send us both parts. Say, the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Uh, so that John can edit those together. Uh, also, please continue to check our Facebook page. Uh, we post a lot of the announcements there that are coming in from the Open Door Food Pantry, and they are still doing a lot of great work. Uh, we've got, we should have instructions up there for pre-packed food bags to donate. So there are lots of ways to get involved and help even during these strange times. So, uh, please join us in our first hymn, number eight, 
Eternal Father, strong to save. Please join us in the prayer of invocation. Holy God, creator of all, the risen Christ taught us from scripture of his death, resurrection, and ascension into your glorious presence. May the living Lord breathe on us his peace, that our eyes may be open to recognize him in breaking bread and to follow wherever he leads, who lives and reigns with you and in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, we know that no one comes here today without sin. Let us together confess our sins before God. Please join us in the prayer of confession. Almighty God, you have raised Jesus from the grave and crowned him Lord of all. We confess that we have not bowed before him or acknowledged his rule in our lives. We have gone along with the way of the world and failed to give him glory. Forgive us and raise us from sin that we may be your faithful people, obeying the commands of our Lord Jesus Christ, who rules the world and is head of the church, his body. Amen. Now hear these words of assurance. God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Amen. And now, as we have been reconciled to God, let us also be reconciled to one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. 
The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. And also with you. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. The peace of Christ be with you. And say also with you. And the with me, you. Let the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Please join us in the prayer for illumination. God of life, your spirit raised Jesus from the dead. Your spirit inspired the prophets and writers of scripture. Your spirit draws us to Christ and helps us to acknowledge him as Lord. We ask that you will send your spirit now to give us deeper insight, encouragement, faith, and hope through the proclamation of the Easter gospel. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. This past Thursday was an important date on the liturgical calendar. It was the Feast of the Ascension. This is the celebration of Jesus' ascension into heaven, as described in our reading from the book of Acts. I imagine that many of us think of the ascension, if we think of it at all, 
as a Roman Catholic celebration. But the truth is, it belongs to all Christians. The Catholics are just a little bit better at remembering it every year. Similarly, I don't think we spend enough time with the Book of Acts. The full title is The Acts of the Apostles. It tells the story of the early church and how a small group of Jesus' followers, empowered by the Holy Spirit, changed the world. We can learn a lot from Acts. The story begins with some basic information. The resurrected Christ appears to the disciples, who are now called apostles, and dwells among them for 40 days. He tells them that they're about to be baptized with the Holy Spirit in a few days. Then Jesus was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. In other words, Jesus is now working from home. Okay, you probably saw that one on Facebook this week, too, but I couldn't resist. Good line. In our Koinonia classes this week, a lot of people wondered what the apostles must have been thinking and feeling during those 40 days between Easter and the Ascension. I imagine it must have been an emotional roller coaster ride for them. Consider what they experienced in about a two month span. First, they witnessed Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead. They watched Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. They stood by as Jesus was arrested, tried, and crucified. The man whom they had hoped was the Messiah didn't lead a revolt against the Romans. He suffered and died while they watched. They're distraught. They're frightened beyond words. They have no leader and their lives might be in danger. Then the risen Christ returns. They must have gone from depression to elation in record time. They got to be with him and share meals with him. They knew that the time they had spent following Jesus was not wasted. They get to be in a direct relationship with Jesus a little while longer. They get to dwell with him, abide with him. But Jesus doesn't lead them back out into the world. Instead, Jesus tells the apostles to wait in Jerusalem. It's their own sort of shelter-in-place order. And what do the apostles do? They ask Jesus for more information. They ask when he'll restore the kingdom to Israel. Jesus puts them back in their place saying, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. It's not about knowledge. It's not about having secret information. At this point, it would be really easy to do a face palm and say to the apostles, what's wrong with you guys? Don't you get it? Are you ever going to get it? I mean, this is one of the recurring themes of the Gospels. The disciples don't quite understand who Jesus is or what the Messiah is supposed to be. And now that they're apostles, they still don't understand. Jesus ascends into heaven and they keep staring up at the cloud as if he might return right away. Fortunately, there are two men there in white robes to tell them they're looking in the wrong place. Men of Galilee, they asked the apostles, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? The question echoes what the angel outside of Jesus' tomb 
asked, why do you seek the living among the dead? It's easy to laugh at the apostles' short-sightedness. But the truth is, humans always get things wrong, including us. I think this story really speaks into our current situation. Much like the apostles, we are chafing under our shelter-in-place orders. We want information. We want to know when the quarantine will be over. We want to know when we can resume our lives. And most of all, we want to know when we can go back to church. These are all normal questions, though I don't have any quick or easy answers. Of course, there is still so much we don't know about the coronavirus, and we have a lot more time on our hands and a lot more anxiety in our hearts than usual. Some people go off in search of secret knowledge. Conspiracy theories are everywhere. We're like the apostles asking when God will come and restore the kingdom to Israel. Jesus is also telling us to sit tight. Jesus is telling us to watch and wait, to pray, and to be in relationship with one another. In God's created world, Jesus was something entirely new. Jesus was, and still is, Emmanuel, God with us. The incarnation, that is, God coming into the world and taking on flesh, becoming Jesus, entering the world as Jesus. The incarnation was a brand new thing, a completely different thing. In Jesus, the disciples, now apostles, were in direct relationship with God. They couldn't quite appreciate what that meant so long as the human Jesus was with them. The ascension isn't the end of the story. No, it's the beginning of a new chapter in a much larger story. Something new is happening. The apostles can't grow in their roles or in their faith while the human Jesus is in the world. Remember, Jesus has told them that they'll do greater works than he has. He also tells them that they're about to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. We'll hear that story next Sunday, but I'll tell you right now. The Holy Spirit is the missing piece of the puzzle. The Spirit is how the apostles can continue Christ's work in the world. The Holy Spirit is what keeps the apostles in a relationship with God, with Jesus, and with one another. And it's through that relationship that they are sent out into all of Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Beloved, we are reaching more people online than we used to reach in person on most Sundays. It is not for us to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority. Instead of looking for knowledge, instead of looking for that spot where Jesus vanished in the air, look for where Jesus is calling us to go. Look for the relationships into which Jesus is calling us. There are a lot of people out there who are struggling to get through this time. Some of them are in this congregation, yet many more do not have this church family to lean on in times of trial. Beloved, we are called to seek them out. We are called to share God's love with them. We are called to bring light into their darkness. 
instead of looking for secret knowledge, we need to look for those who are suffering in silence and isolation. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now, please join us in hymn number 246, Christ is Alive. Beloved, just as the Lord has been good and faithful to us, it is time to return that goodness with joy and thanksgiving unto the Lord. Please continue to send in your checks, your offerings. Even better, send your donations online. If you can dig a little deeper, please do that. But if you cannot, if you have been laid off or furloughed, we understand. But please remember, our bills don't go away when people are not here in worship. Thank you. We give our thanks through our talents, our time, and our treasure. Thanks be to God whose love creates us. Thanks be to God whose mercy redeems us. Thanks be to God whose grace leads us into the future. Amen. Now we come to that time in the service when we lift up the joys and concerns of this congregation for those among us, for those in our community, and the world at large. First, let me say that all of our hearts are heavy 
And we lift up Nancy Brewer and her son Shaq and all of her friends and loved ones. All of our hearts are heavy because of Nancy's passing. We ask that God may shine his light in the darkness of all who loved her, especially Shaq, that they might know God's peace and comfort in this time, and that we might find ways to share that peace and comfort with them as we comfort one another in this loss. I am certain that all of our hearts are heavy this morning. This morning, we also have two prayer shawls. The blue prayer shawl is for a woman named Heather, who recently lost her sister, Sarah, in a car accident. The accident was this week. Heather has suffered a lot of tragedy around her over the last couple years. We pray that she feels God's light and love in this time of darkness. The uh, blue and green multicolored prayer shawl is for a woman named Christine. Her husband, Bruno, died suddenly and unexpectedly. Christine is now a single parent to a seven-month-old daughter, Mila. Prayers for peace and comfort for Christine and Mila. Prayers that they may know God's light and love in this time of darkness, and that they feel that they are not alone. Next, we offer continued prayers for Susan Deaton. Her valve replacement surgery was successful, and she's home from the hospital. Prayers for continued healing and wholeness for Susan. We also offer continued prayers for Susan McKinney. She's feeling a lot better, but she's still tired, and as of the last time I spoke with her, she hasn't been cleared to return to work. We ask for continued healing and wholeness for Susan as she gets over the effects of COVID-19. We pray that she might feel God's love and care during this time. We also lift up Judy Kavikia. Judy was out for a walk on Monday morning, and while she was out walking, she passed out and fell down. And so she scraped up her face a little. Uh, She has a lot of bumps and bruises. She seems to be okay, but doctors are still trying to figure out what happened. So prayers for healing and wholeness for Judy and accurate diagnostics and a clear way forward. We also continue to hold Trina Parks and her family in prayer. Not only is Trina still grieving the loss of her brother, Daryl, But this week, she lost her aunt, Elle Willie, who was such a big part of her life. So prayers for light in the midst of her darkness. Prayers that we may all see the opportunities to bear God's light and love into Trina's darkness. You know what? Trina is not alone. There are lots of folks out there who are overwhelmed by the experiences of grief for other people in their lives. Specifically, we lift up Sue Stoya and Michelle Podesta. As a guidance counselor, Sue sees all of the emails of condolences that go through her school district. And she suffers with her friends. Both of the prayer shawls this morning were for friends and coworkers of Sue. We also lift up Michelle, who is dealing with many family members who are grieving friends and loved ones. Along with Sue and Michelle, we lift up everyone else whose heart is heavy because so many are grieving around. In this time, we also offer prayers for everyone who is cut off from loved ones. Those who can't visit their loved ones in hospitals and nursing homes. Those who are in hospitals and care facilities and can't receive visits from their loved ones. 
And most of all, we lift up those who have been unable to visit and sit with their loved ones as they have died. Tomorrow is Memorial Day. So we also offer a prayer of thanksgiving for all who have served and for every family who has lost a loved one in the service. Finally, this morning, we offer a prayer of thanksgiving and prayers for health and safety for all the helpers out there. We lift up all the nurses, doctors, lab techs, nurses' aides, housekeeping staff, and first responders who are on the front lines of this pandemic. We give thanks for all they do, and we pray that God continue to watch over them in this time. And we ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join us in our final hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
Now, beloved, as you depart from this service, know that God is with you. Know that Jesus is with you. Know that the Holy Spirit is with you. Know that you are loved. Do not return evil for evil to any person. But remember that we are all loved by God and that we are all called to share that love with everyone we meet. Go forth and be the salt of the earth and the light of the world and let all God's children say, Amen. Hi everyone, it's the Cantos. We hope you're enjoying this beautiful weather. And make sure to be safe and stay healthy. So get out there and have some fun. We miss you and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Hi everybody, we miss you. Um, this is our crazy dog. She likes to be quarantined with us. Hopefully we'll see you soon. Love you guys. Hey guys, love you, miss you. Hope to see you all soon. Take care, stay safe.